welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial of Shomu's biology and we've been talking about evolutionary biology for CBSC NEET as well as NET exam and let's talk about uh, today's class in this today's class we'll be talking about Hardy Weinberg equilibrium or Hardy Weinberg principle I already have a video on Hardy Weinberg principle that's mostly for a little advanced level so for a school level I'm trying to explain Hardy Weinberg principle in a very simple manner now remember to, to understand hardy weinberg equilibrium you need to know the evolution and especially mechanism of evolution that means how exactly evolution works and we know evolution means obviously we are looking at species formed from a common ancestor so it's diverging from a common ancestor so when we talk about evolution and evolution is also linked with origin of new species and while new species is being originated those species have unique properties okay the properties for which the species is identified now uh, those physiological properties we can see them from outside we known as the phenotypic properties if you recall the genetics class but every single phenotypic property that we can see for an organism is somehow being controlled and regulated by the genotype of that organism okay so as we talked about uh, the height of the tree that capital T capital T capital T small t small t small t you know if you recall genetics class capital T capital T means let's say tall capital T small t also tall small t small t short plant here we know about that this capital T capital T is homozygous for the dominant allele that is capital T so we have a dominant allele that is capital T and a recessive allele that is small t two dominant allele is homozygous dominant one dominant one uh, recessive allele is heterozygous which also behaves and the phenotype will be like the dominant allele which is also tall and two recessive together will be known as homozygous recessive in this case short so all this uh, different genotypes are possible now this genotype ultimately regulates the phenotype in this case which we can see the plants to be a tall plant or a short plant or moderate height plant any of this kind now the question is when we talk about a pop population okay a population which is uh, like filled with many different individuals uh, population of one particular species so let's say there are hundred individual living in that population now among all those hundred individual they have this genotype uh, to be present like few of them has the homozygous dominant few of the heterozygous few of the homozygous recessive genotype now if we consider all this genotype together uh, and if we if we add all the genotypes together uh, and that will be known as gene pool gene pool is where if you drag all the genotype of the individuals in the population together it's the gene pool now in this gene pool uh, let's say there are total 100 different uh, genotypes are there all the genotypes if we add them together and among them if i ask you how many of them are homozygous dominant let's say only 30 of them 30 percent how many of them homozygous recessive let's say 10% how many of them heterozygous 60% so that give a rise to the total number of uh, individuals that are present so these are known as frequencies okay genotype frequencies genotype frequency so genotype for homozygous dominant heterozygous and homozygous recessive similarly we can also calculate uh, allele frequency because there are two alleles dominant allele capital T this is equal in small t so we can also calculate the total what is the total percentage of the dominant allele that is present in the gene pool or what is the total percentage of small t that is recessive allele in that gene pool we can calculate that so we can calculate the genotype frequencies we can also calculate the allele frequencies now why we are talking about this frequency you know relative frequency of one particular allele so that means the frequency of that particular allele divided by the total number of alleles that are present into 100 so we can calculate this allele frequencies pretty easily now why we are talking about this is because Hardy and Weinberg stated one simple idea the idea is Hardy and Weinberg stated a hypothetical population and in that hypothetical population Hardy Weinberg stated that that population will not evolve if 
the combination of the dominant as well as recessive allele frequency is equals to 1 and that combination of dominant and recessive allele frequency will remain the same it will not change from generation to generation so at the parent generation the frequency combination was 1 daughter generation it is also 1 no matter how many generations we test in all the generations the frequency will be unaltered it will be 1 that is the population which is not evolving at all so if in a population you will find that those allele frequency combination is changing the value from 1 then that means that population is evolving so any population that does not follow the rule of Hardy and Weinberg is actually an evolving population so in reality all the populations are evolving population because Hardy and Weinberg principle does not apply to any practical population that we can see outside and surrounding us so Hardy and population Hardy and Weinberg population is just a myth it's not possible it's a hypothesis that help us to find out the behavior of the different population that we are working with so what what Hardy and Weinberg stated is very very simple that the dominant allele capital K capital T here and recessive allele that is small t equals to 1 that frequency will be the same that is 1 it will remain constant generation after generation now Hardy and Weinberg told us that that this dominant allele they represent dominant allele as p and they represent recessive allele as q so they stated p plus q equals to 1 so that is uh, the formula of Hardy and Weinberg and it will remain 1 no matter how much change and changing environmental factors are working but in reality there are many different environmental factors and phenomena that's going to change this frequency thus causing evolution now we can also simplify this equation something like this a little complex form square in both the sides so what we get here p square plus 2 p q plus q square because p plus q whole square equals to p square plus 2 p q plus q square equals to 1 so we get this formula as well now as we know there are p square means 2 p is present q square means 2 q is present so this p square is equal to the homozygous dominant genotype frequency because 2p p stands for the dominant one so homozygous this is let me write it down here this is homozygous dominant 2q homozygous recessive and 2pq are heterozygous genotype frequency so we can find out the different genotype frequency and the addition of which gives us one okay now what we can see now is any population which is not following this rule is not following hardy weinberg equilibrium that means that population is evolving so why does natural populations not follow the hardy weinberg law the reason behind it in to follow the hardy weinberg law five important natural phenomena should not happen because you know there are five situations which disrupts the natural population to follow the hardy weinberg law what are they let's talk about the first one let's say natural selection natural selection so nature selects the fittest individual which is not following the rule of hardy weinberg second thing migration that is new organisms coming into the population or organism from this population flying and going to the other places that will change the frequency it will not make the frequency constant third thing what is that mutation mutation means it's a spontaneous change in the gene and that results in the alteration of the genotype so mutation alters the genotype and as a result of which it will not follow uh, it will alter the frequency the Hardy Weinberg equilibrium it will alter the allele frequencies non-random mating so to follow Hardy Weinberg equilibrium we need to follow random mating random mating means there is no biasness in mating that's applicable to the Hardy Weinberg equilibrium but 
naturally in the environment there is always a biasness for the mating process there are sexual biasness and there are different biasness let's say courtship behaviors that are observed in birds where only a good songbirds is picked by other female songbirds or male songbirds for the mate and that is the reason you know uh, this non random mating is always there it's it's not possible so biasness will alter the allele frequency and that's the truth so natural selection migration mutation non random mating so in the migration there is always uh, emigration as well as immigration both are involved so all these features uh, that we see all this pro, uh, phenomena that is involved this is going to change uh, the allele frequency one more thing that can change the allele frequency is the genetic drift so let me write it that too genetic drift now what is genetic drift for very small population so where the population size is really small i don't know whether you can see this one uh, the fifth one i write down genetic drift so for a very small population size that is the initial member of the population is small genetic drift is a random change in the allele frequency in that population why because let's assume there are five let's say 10 beetles are there four yellow beetles six red beetles now accidentally uh, two uh, of the yellow beetles are killed squashed by by some people's foot and as a result of which you know now two out of 10 is the percentage of the beetles and the frequency of the two out of eight is the frequency of the yellow beetles remain which was earlier four out of the eight so that's how it's very easy to change the allele frequency for a small population where the number of individuals present is very small but for a large population uh, it's not the truth for a large population it's not easy to change the allele frequency because for a large let's say population size with 10000 individual even 1 lakh individual changing one or two or killing one or two individuals flying one or two individuals here and there is not going to impact the allele frequency that much which is going to impact for a small population size so in a sense all these properties natural selection migration mutation non random mating and genetic drift they are going to change the allele frequency of the hardy weinberg law so that's going to change the frequency to something else the addition of dominant and recessive allele will no longer going to be one it's going to be altered thus telling us that the population is evolving so every single evolving population they are not following the hardy weinberg equilibrium and they are somehow witnessing any of this five important pressure that will allow the population to evolve okay so that is the idea of hardy and weinberg equilibrium i hope i am able to explain it in a simple manner so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you